On this week's Goal Show, the brilliance of Neymar, Brazil's hottest talents on show for Santos. We'll show you why the Central Coast Mariners are the hot favourites to win the A-League in Australia this year. There's the latest from the Africa Cup of Nations. And why discipline's a big issue for Chile at the South American Youth Championship. Despite near constant speculation linking him with a move away from Brazil, young sensation Neymar remains with Santos and appears hungry for more honours. He's already won six major titles with the Sao Paulo State Club, including the prestigious Copa Libertadores in 2011. He's not 21 until the 5th of February. Sporting a new haircut, Neymar took to the field on Wednesday as Santos played Botafogo Ribeiro Prato in their first home game of 2013. They began their state championship campaign with a 3-1 win at Sao Bernardo four days earlier and the defending champions went ahead here when Cicero pounced on a poor clearance from Botafogo keeper Rafael Santos. Neymar displayed his dazzling ability throughout, none more so than when he plucked a pass from the air and elegantly put Santos 2-0 ahead before half-time. Despite their dominance, Santos had to wait until late in the day to put the stamp on victory. Neymar this time supplying the pass for Ezekiel Marias to score and ensure Santos of maximum points from two games. Another sparkling show from the brilliant Neymar. On to the weekend's games and Sao Paulo face newly promoted Atletico Sorocaba on Saturday at their Morumbi Stadium. Sao Paulo had won 5-0 against Bolivar in Copa Libertadores, qualifying in midweek, so we're in high spirits here. Brazil international Ganso was making just his seventh appearance for the club since moving from Santos in September. And it was via his head that Sao Paulo snatched the lead here during a dominant display in the first half. Ganso's first goal for Sao Paulo. The away side were more productive after the break, but Sao Paulo proved too strong. Marcelo Cagnete's rising drive making it 2-0. Like Ganso, the Argentine midfielder scoring his first goal for the club. Fabio Sanchez gave Sorocaba hope of salvaging something. But Sao Paulo held on for a second successive league win. Santos followed up their win in midweek by drawing at Bragantino on Sunday. World Club champions Corinthians won at Mirasol. This is how the top of the Paulista table looks after three rounds. Santos are chasing a fourth successive Sao Paulo State Championship title. The top eight will make the playoffs. Across the Pacific in Australia, the regular A-League season's approaching its final stretch. The top two met on Friday nights as the Central Coast Mariners welcomed Adelaide United to New South Wales. With the Mariners three points clear at the top ahead of the encounter, they fell behind against the run of play when fullback Daniel Bowles scored his first ever Adelaide goal via a deflection. Mariners coach Graham Arnold responded by sending young striker Mitchell Duke on in the second half and his impact was almost immediate. Duke slotting in an equaliser to end the barren run, the 22-year-old's first goal since making his debut two seasons ago. A handball by Bowles saw Central Coast awarded a penalty three minutes later. But top scorer Daniel McBreen saw his spot kick saved by Eugenie Galakovic. However, Adelaide couldn't preserve parity for much longer as Duke stole the show with another from range.
Michael McGlinchey nudged in a late third as the Mariners sealed victory. Adelaide suffering a second successive A-League loss. Saturday saw an action-packed encounter in Melbourne for the Big Blue Derby match as victory welcomed rivals Sydney FC on Australia Day. Sydney's Italian superstar Alessandro Del Piero was the big draw. But the fans were to come away talking about an upcoming prospect, victory's Marco Rojas. The 21-year-old Kiwi impressed throughout, breaking the deadlock in the opening half an hour, courtesy of a deflection. A frustrated Sydney side went down to 10 men in the second half, and shortly after, Melbourne doubled their lead. Archie Thompson converting a neat move in the 67th minute. Breathe a lot easier Melbourne victory. Rojas's second boosted his already growing profile in front of the European scouts rumoured to be in the stands. He did well to find space before scoring with another deflected shot. Joel Griffith got a consolation for Sydney, but the Sky Blues were beaten, eventually ending the game with nine men after another red card. The match ended 3-1. Elsewhere over the weekend, Western Sydney continued their good form with a win over Melbourne Heart. Defending champions Brisbane Raw got a vital win at Perth and bottom of the table Wellington held Newcastle to a draw. Melbourne victory then the big movers during round 18, up to second and five points behind the leaders. Adelaide dropped down to fourth after their defeat with a place in the top six required to reach the final series in April. Wesley Snyder ended speculation over his future by signing for Turkish giants Galatasaray on Monday. The Dutch international left Inter following a dispute over his salary and signed a reported three-and-a-half-year contract. Schneider's former club Real Madrid hit the headlines with allegations in a Spanish press of unrest. Club president Florentino Perez was forced to publicly deny that the players had threatened to leave unless head coach Jose Mourinho was removed. Para que quede claro, quiero decir... To make it absolutely clear, I would like to say that what was said about the dinner with the captains on Tuesday is completely false. There was no ultimatum given to the manager, nor anything even remotely similar. As is our normal custom, which you're all aware of, in January there's a meeting with the two captains, the general director and myself, with the only objective being to clarify our goals for the different competitions we're competing in during the season. Real moved into the transfer market to find cover for injured keeper Iker Casillas on Friday. They signed Sevilla's Diego Lopez, with Casillas set to miss next month's Champions League showdown with Manchester United. Spain international Fernando Llorente confirmed he'll play for Juventus next season after signing a pre-contract agreement with the Italian Giants. The 27-year-old will move on a four-year deal once his current contract with Athletic Bilbao expires in June. Chelsea's Belgian international star Eden Hazard faces an FA trial after being charged with violent conduct following his side's League Cup semi-final with Swansea. Hazard appeared to kick a ball boy when trying to retrieve the ball himself, prompting a red card. They know that uh, they were wrong, and that's it. So he was wasting time. Hazard was frustrated. He, was to, he wanted to get the ball back quickly. So both, they have made a mistake, and we cannot say too much. Manchester United made Crystal Palace winger Wilfred Zaha their big money buy of the transfer window. The talented 20-year-old has signed a five-year contract but has been loaned back to Palace until the summer. Veteran Kiwi defender Ryan Nelson will end his eight-year stay in English football this week when he leaves QPR to take over as boss of MLS club Toronto FC. The 35-year-old replaces former England international Paul Mariner in Canada. Former England boss Sven Joran Eriksson signed an 18-month contract as a technical advisor of United Arab Emirates club Al Nasser. The 67-year-old Swede had been linked with a coaching role in Germany, but has opted to go to the Middle East.
No, it's not for money. It's for the love to football and see new parts of the world and new football league. Absolutely. Two-time World Footballer of the Year, Ronaldinho will feature for Brazil for the first time in a year after being recalled by Luis Felipe Scolari. The 32-year-old's in the squad to play England at Wembley, a friendly which forms part of the FA's 150th anniversary celebrations. And finally, another Brazil veteran, Rivaldo, joined his 15th club. Now 40, he signed for Sacatanho in his native country. He'd been playing in Angola until late last year. Coming up in part two of this week's goal show, Group A draws to a conclusion at the Africa Cup of Nations. And Denmark face Canada in an international friendly in Arizona. Welcome back to this week's Goal Show. Still to come, we follow the Danish national team to the United States. And there's action from the South American Youth Championship in Argentina. First to the drama of the Africa Cup of Nations, with host South Africa hoping to secure qualification to the quarterfinals against a highly rated Morocco side. Group A had produced just four goals in four matches up to this, but with everything at stake here, both sides came out for the win. First blood went to Morocco as early as the 10th minute. Issam El Adoua headed home to put his side in control of the group. It looked like Morocco would be joining South Africa in the quarter-finals, a possibility made more likely when Angola scored in their match against the Cape Verde Islands in Port Elizabeth. Nando's own goal left both Angola and Cape Verde level on two points and out of the tournament. However, there was a lot more to come. As the matches entered their final stage, there was another goal in Durban. This time, May Malangu put South Africa level at one all. And suddenly, Morocco were going out, with Angola taking their place in the quarterfinals. But then there was another goal in Port Elizabeth. A strike from Cape Verde's Fernando Varela to the Angolans' dismay. Cape Verde would now go through due to having a better disciplinary record than Morocco. Before news could filter through to the Moses Mabida Stadium, Morocco had shifted the balance of the group again. Abdelila Hafidi's 81st minute strike made it 2-1 and put them back in the knockout stages. South Africa weren't safe yet. The goal for Cape Verde in the other match would send them out. But four minutes later, they scored an equaliser. <laughs> Centre-back Siobonga Sanguene curled in his second goal of the tournament to wild scenes. South Africa had a firm grip on a place in the quarters, with Morocco still due to join them. There was one final twist to come, though, in Port Elizabeth. Cape Verde's Heldon scored after a mistake from Angolan keeper Lama. That turned out to be the winner, with Cape Verde reaching the quarterfinals in their first ever Africa Cup of Nations campaign. Host South Africa held on for the 2-2 draw, sending Morocco home after one of the most incredible group finales in tournament history. So, South Africa and Cape Verde Islands go through to the quarter-finals. South Africa will play the runners-up from Group B on Saturday, with Cape Verde facing the group winners. The Canadian national football team still reeling from a premature elimination from World Cup qualifying. An 8-1 loss to Honduras in October, ending their hopes of reaching Brazil 2014. Picking up the pieces is Colin Miller, the 48-year-old Scottish-born Canadian native, appointed on an interim basis after the departure of Stephen Hart. Canada faced Denmark in an international friendly in Tucson, Arizona on Saturday, with Miller hoping to see his team avoid a fourth loss in a row. 
It was both sides' first fixture of 2013 and an opportunity to experiment, particularly for Denmark, who resumed their World Cup qualifying campaign in a month's time. Among the young players attempting to impress head coach Morten Olsen, 19-year-old Andreas Cornelius. The FC Copenhagen striker quickly got Denmark up and running in front of a crowd of less than three and a half thousand. Kasper Lorentzen added another and the score read 2-0 with just 11 minutes played. Cornelius made it 3-0 before half-time as a Canadian side with six players making their international debuts fell apart. The 11,000 capacity Kino Veterans Memorial Stadium is primarily a baseball park home to the Pacific Coast League's Tucson Padres. And Denmark were home and dry here when Cornelius added a fourth to complete a fine hat-trick in the second half. Denmark now face Mexico in midweek before returning to Europe. Canada are set to play the USA on Wednesday. This South American Youth Championship has thrown up its fair share of thrills and spills this year. Some shocks too, most notably the early elimination of both Brazil and host Argentina. The final stages are well underway. Hoping to bounce back from a defeat to Paraguay, Chile met Ecuador in Mendoza on Wednesday. Nicola Castillo's lob put them ahead, his fourth goal of the tournament. A star rising game by game. And when Ecuador goalkeeper Oro Fernandez brought down Diego Rubio in the area, Chile were offered the chance to add another. Fernandez escaped with just a yellow card, but Rubio held his nerve from the spot. With real force. Where Chile's attacking play has impressed, their ill discipline has not here. Despite being undefeated in the group stages, twice Chile ended games with nine men after having two players sent off. And sure enough, another dismissal ensued here. Sevilla's Brian Rebeo sent for an early bath in the second half. Six reds in six games, the shocking statistic hanging over the Chilean team. Elias Strias header subsequently got Ecuador back in the game at 2-1. To make it 2-1, game on again here now for Ecuador, big time. But any hopes of a comeback were dashed when Claudio Baeza bent in a fine free kick with a little over 15 minutes left. It's a truly stellar goal from Claudio Baeza. And 10 man Chile sealed another win, their first in the final stage with a fourth near the end. Felipe Mora took home after some good approach play from Christian Cuevas. And that is the game done and dusted here now. 4 1 it ended. 10 man Chileans. What a way to bounce back from their defeats to Paraguay. Following a defeat against Uruguay in their opening final stage game, Peru were looking for a good response against Paraguay. Peru had contributed to the downfall of Brazil by beating them in the first stage. And a return to winning ways looked in prospects when defender Miguel Araujo headed them into a first half lead. But Peru couldn't add to that, and Paraguay, who'd beaten Chile three days earlier, earned a level late on. Junior Alonso, the man on target, to maintain their unbeaten start to the final stage. At the end of the final stage, each of the top four will earn a place at the FIFA Under-20 World Cup in Turkey later this year. Peru's draw left them facing a tough task ahead of the concluding games this week. A 1-0 win against Uruguay put Colombia on the brink of qualification. The tournament ends on February the 3rd. Alessandro Del Fiero strike for Sydney FC against Wellington, his third of four in the game, 
earned more than 52% of the votes to win our latest Global Goal of the Week poll on Goal.com. Coming up, four more goals from the last seven days from which to choose your favourites. First up, Neymar scoring for Santos in the Paulista Championship. Another example of just why he's courted by so many. Goal two is Marcelo Cañete's superb long-range effort for Sao Paulo against Sorocaba. Mitchell Duke's second for Central Coast against Adelaide in Australia is goal three. Goal four is from Denmark's rising star Andreas Cornelius, the teenager completing his hat-trick against Canada in Arizona. And finally, goal five, Claudio Baez's expertly executed free kick for Chile's under-20 team during their big win against Ecuador. To vote for your favourite goals, simply head to the video section on goal.com. The winner will be announced on Friday. On next week's Goal Show, there'll be more from Africa, where Cup of Nations holders Zambia are keen to upset the odds again. And we'll find out who'll be taking the place of Brazil and Argentina at the FIFA Under-20 World Cup.